We just talked about how we can solve quadratic equations by factoring. However, not every quadratic equation can be factored in order to solve. So, we have to talk about other methods, other techniques that we have for solving quadratic equations, starting with the square root property. So, here's what the square root property says. It says that if you have a variable expression squared equal to a number, then the conclusion is that x will equal plus or minus the square root of that number. Now, that plus or minus is very important to us because as we've shown, when you have a power of two, we expect there to be two solutions. And so that's where the plus or minus comes in. Uh, so I want you to just take an equation that we could have solved by factoring. Uh, let's look at x squared is equal to 16. Now if I take this guy and I try to solve this by factoring, using the zero factor theorem, you would have to move the 16 over to the left side first. So we have x squared minus 16 is equal to zero. And then we would factor this. Well, this is the difference of squares. So this factors as x plus four times x minus four. And using the zero factor theorem, we find that x is equal to negative four, or from the other factor, x is equal to positive four. So we expected two answers and we get two answers. So that's good, right? Well, let's see what the square root property says. The square root property says that if you take x squared is equal to 16, you've got a square that's equal to a number. You can, so let's jump ahead there for a second. You can then say that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of that number. So x equals plus or minus 16. And you don't want to leave that as plus or minus the square root of 16 because you can simplify. So x is equal to plus or minus 4. So you still get two solutions, but it's kind of condensed here. You can say x equals plus or minus 4. Or you can say x equals negative 4 or x equals positive 4. Both of these guys are going to be valid. So really no big deal there, right? Well, let's take a look at this next example. So let's examine x squared is equal to 45. Now, if we try to use the zero factor theorem, that means we have to move the 45 to the other side. So we'd have x squared minus 45 is equal to zero. But then we run into a problem because x squared minus 45 is not a difference of two squares. So we can't do anything with that. This guy, unfortunately for us, is prime. Now that doesn't mean no solution or anything like that. That just means we can't factor it. But we do have that square root property. The square root property says is that if you have a square by itself, you can rewrite this so that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of that other side of the equation. So plus or minus the square root of 45. And again, you don't want to leave it like this, but unfortunately, uh, the square root of 45, or excuse me, 45, is not a perfect square. So we have to find a way to factor this so that we can identify a factor that is a perfect square. And we know that 45 can break down to be 9 times 5, like that. That's not the only way to break it down, but it is the best way so that we can see a perfect square that's a factor. So each of these is really inside of its own square root. So x is equal to plus or minus. So you are really simplifying that square root and putting the plus or minus in front of it. So just kind of ignore that right now. So the square root of 45 is going to be the square root of 9, which gives me 3 and then the square root of five, which has to stay as the square root of five. So here are our two solutions, plus or minus three square roots of five. The placement of the plus or minus is very, very important. Please understand that it's this and not three plus or minus the square root of five. 
Okay, there is a difference here. So this means the plus or minus is on this entire expression. However, this plus or minus is only applied to the square root. So you notice that this answer, this irrational answer, is not something that we would have gotten from factory. So the square root property opens up the doors to help us solve all kinds of quadratic equations that we couldn't have solved before. So in the next few videos, we're going to see uh, what do these examples look like? How do I correctly apply the square root property so that I can simplify and solve these equations easily?